The government claims do's and don'ts are effective. And the government also plans on censoring OTT platform contents. Too bad for you Netflix people. Stay tuned for details. Welcome to the latest news from Bali and in Indonesia. This is August 23rd, 2023, and my name is Bruce. What is the weather like today in Bali? Oh, it is another great day. The temperature is 29.1 degrees Celsius here in Kampung Bugis in Singaraja in Buling, and the humidity is a very nice 53%, and wind speed, well, it's a little windy today, 16.7 kilometers per hour, but Sunny, sunny, sunny. It's another lovely August day, and I hope wherever you are, it is a lovely day as well. The Ministry of Law and Human Rights claims foreigners acting badly in Bali reduced due to the implementation of do's and don'ts. The regional office of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights in Bali said that the number of foreign nationals who are behaving badly has been decreasing since early July, so early July through mid-August, the numbers are down and the decline in the bad behavior is said to be due to the do's and don'ts policy or the obligations and prohibitions for foreigners in Bali. According to Pak Angia, who I've talked about many times, he said uh, in July up till now, relatively small number of violations. He said less than 20 people. Wow, that is a big drop. From early January to mid-August 2023, 206 foreigners were deported from Bali, according to him. And he said that the number of deportations has also dropped. The average foreigner who's been expelled is because of overstaying visas. And he said from July 1st up until now, it's less than 10 people that have been deported. So that is a big drop. And what is a do's and don'ts leaflet? Well, if you're new to this channel or if you're just here in Bali for the first time, the leaflet contains a guide for foreign tourists when traveling to the Island of the Gods, and it has 12 obligations and 8 prohibitions. The obligations include respecting holy places, wearing polite clothes, and using the services of a licensed guide. Meanwhile, the prohibitions include entering sacred areas, such as temples, climbing sacred trees, transacting with foreign currency, and not using crypto or digital currency while you are in Bali. Now, it's interesting that they said that, because if you read any of the comments on the last video, somebody said, well, when I came in, I didn't get anything at the airport, and neither did my friend. Now... If they're not giving them out at the airport anymore, they're giving them out at hotels, how are people getting this do's and don'ts leaflet? I don't know. If anybody has come in recently who's watching this video, did you receive something when you came through immigration? Did you get a do's and don'ts leaflet? Or when you checked into your hotel, did you get a do's and don'ts leaflet? I'm interested in knowing how this is being distributed. But according to Hukum and Ham, the do's and don'ts is responsible for better behavior. And whatever the reason, better behavior is always good. And the second main story today, and this is interesting, Indonesia aims to censor over-the-top platform content. That's what the OTT meant in the lead. Indonesia's communication and informatics minister, Budi Ari Setiadi, commented the other day that the government has plans to censor content of the over-the-top platforms, the OTT, for example, such as Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Hulu, etc. The minister said that the plan emerged due to the belief that the OTT platforms do not act similarly to other agencies that provide movie viewing. He said these platforms argue that they are not broadcasting platforms, even though, he said, they're producing audiovisual content. He said, we plan to take action against them. Hmm. Minister Budi explained that the censorship is necessary to protect digital cultures and digital ethics in Indonesia. However, the minister admitted 
that the plan has not been communicated to the targeted platforms yet. Right, they're going to do this, but they haven't decided to tell them yet. They're going to wait. He said, this is still in a discussion phase. That's good news for those of us that have Netflix or one of the other platforms. Previously, the plan was revealed by the Director General of Public Information and Communication of the Ministry, Usman Kansong. He mentioned that censorship is intended to prevent Indonesians from being exposed to non-ethical media. I'm taking that to mean naked or semi-naked bodies. According to Usman, the other day and Sunday, he said the censorship is to ensure fairness for the public. He said the ministry will gather stakeholders soon to discuss the issue, including the Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, and Technology, the Film Censorship Board, and OTT actors and their partners. He said the censorship has to be discussed until there are no more questions, such as why they are censoring movies in Indonesia. While there are no censorship on OTT platforms, it's not fair. He said that's what people are going to say. He said, I think no censorship is the reason why people prefer to watch movies from OTT rather than television. You think? In the end, more people are being exposed to things that violate ethics. So, if you've got Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus or one of the other platforms, and I don't know what they are, I don't have any of them, but if you don't want to watch censored content, well, you may have to find some other avenues in the future. Think VPNs. And it still surprises me that this censorship is an issue when it is so easy to access porn, for example. Everybody does it. It can be done quite easily. We've had ministers caught while they were working looking at porn. Kids know how to access porn, so I don't know why, but that's the government's thing, and they're going to do that, and not much that we can do about it. If you don't like censorship, you'll just have to find a way around it or put up with it. It does change things significantly. I was watching Game of Thrones here when that was the big thing. And then when I went over to Australia and I was working on a cruise ship, I was watching Game of Thrones there on the cruise ship. Wow, there were some big differences. A lot of stuff was cut out here that was not cut, that was not cut out in Australia. And so I said, wow, okay, that is a big difference. So you are missing stuff if censorship goes through. So. We'll just have to wait and see, as usual. And next, this tragedy is still being investigated, but it looks like it's just about done. Foreigner dies while playing flying fish. The Bali police say so far it's purely an accident. The Bali Regional Police reveal that the continuation of the investigation into the death of a foreign national from Japan is still ongoing. The head of Bali Police Public Relations said that the investigation into the death of the Japanese foreigner was carried out by the Bali Police. So far, the cause of the Japanese victim's death was purely an accident, he said. No negligence has been found. This is as of Saturday, August 19th. The Bali Police have examined six witnesses regarding the death of Kikuchi Satoshi, Six witnesses consisted of water sport owners, operators, flying fish assistants, local residents, and the victim's wife. The victim, a 60-year-old man, was taking part in the flying fish rides at Bali Coral Water Sport in Benoa, and apparently a big gust of wind came, and the flying fish suddenly pulled to the right, and the assistant lost his hold and he fell as did the, the victim and his child who also fell. They were about 40 meters off the beach and fell from a height of approximately three meters. The Japanese victim fell and face down and hit the water. He was pulled out and first aid was given. He was rushed to the hospital, but he was pronounced dead at the hospital. In the last few days, the Minister of Tourism, Pak Santiago Uno, has commented on this and said investigation is going to be going on and they're going to be looking at all of the operators who are doing things like this 
to make sure that they have all the necessary licenses and safety procedures. So that is where we are at with this story right now. Of course, this has gone viral. Anytime a tourist dies, especially in something like this, there is going to be a lot of investigations and condolences to the family. And here's something for people who are going to be traveling around. Government to merge three state-owned airlines. Yes, state-owned enterprises minister Eric Thohir, who may be a vice presidential candidate, coming up soon, has said he plans to merge the country's three state-run airlines to improve services and reduce costs, although analysts have raised questions about the efficacy of the move. Pakhto here pointed to a similar merger of four state-owned port operators, Palindo 1, 2, 3, and 4, and he said that that has halved the cost, the overall cost, and he said that he's going to be merging the national flag carrier, Garuda, along with its low-cost subsidiary, CityLink, as well as Polita Air. Polita Air is the airline arm of the state-owned oil giant, Persamina. SOEs, he said, need to keep bringing down costs. Palindo has been merged from four companies into one, and they're doing great. And he said, and we're going to look for the same kind of results when we push Polita, CityLink, and Garuda into one group. Garuda Indonesia and CityLink together take about a third of domestic passenger market. Pak Tho here added that Indonesia state-owned airlines now have 550 planes, 200 short of the official target. He said merging the airlines could help the country meet the target in the future. CityLink president told the Jakarta Post on Tuesday that there was indeed a plan to merge the three state-owned airlines and that a team at the SOE's ministry was handling it. He noted that the merger was expected to happen this year. You know, when anybody says this year in Indonesia, could be any year. Garuda Indonesia CEO said in a statement also yesterday that discussions regarding the merger were ongoing and the plan was still in the early phases and that the airline was exploring its options. Not quite as gung-ho as CityLink. And meanwhile, the corporate secretary of Polita Air told the Jakarta Post yesterday that the airline supported the plan. However, Harris Echo Furudin, an analyst at the state-owned bank Bank Mandiri, told the Jakarta Post that the differences in standards of the three state-owned airlines would add to the complexity of the merger and that the process is going to take a long time. For example, Garuda is a full-service airline. If you've flown on it, you know, and I like Garuda. And Polita is a mid-service airline, and CityLink is the low-cost carrier. And so he's saying put, putting those three together is going to take some organization. Just last June, so just a little over a year ago, Garuda Indonesia acquired creditor's approval to restructure $142 trillion in liabilities. Root had been previously declared bankrupt by SOE's ministry because it was not able to service its debt. In June of this year, Ruta reported a nest loss of $76.5 million, million U.S. dollars. The analyst said the merger could be a distraction for the state-owned airlines and that improving their financial performance should be the main focus right now. The problem of the country's lack of passenger airplanes could be solved if airlines regain lesser's trust with a good bottom line, he said. He added, even after the debt restructuring, lessers are still thinking twice before leasing airplanes to Garuda. So there are some problems in the airline industry, and we'll just have to wait and see how this works out. It would be nice if it brought down the price of Garuda. Love flying Garuda, but it is significantly more expensive generally than flying one of the low-cost carriers. And here is something, there's a couple of interesting things about this. The prohibition of vehicles going down to Pandawa Beach is installed. Well, <laughs> you see from the image, somebody, uh, apparently a tourist, drove their car down to the beach and it got stuck there. According to the head of Kutu Traditional Village, he said he can't stop thinking about the behavior of visitors that come to the beach and like to drive their cars down along the beach. 
He said, even though there is a ban on this, he said, people still do it anyway. He said, there's signs up and people that were working there monitor, talk to them and say, you can't do this. But he said, they get angry and then they do it anyway. He said that the sand, the consistency of the sand is much different than say over in Kuda where it is more dense. He said over here, it's, it's very loose and easy for cars to sink into the sand. He said, the village had said, this isn't the first time this has happened. Cars have got stuck here. It's happened before. So of course you get pinheads that, you know, they want to do this and for whatever reason they want to drive their car down the beach. I don't know why, but even though there's signs there and people tell them not to do it, okay. Now the image went viral on social media along with the comment. Once again, unscrupulous foreigners drove their car to Pandawa Beach. Guess what? When he was asked about it, he said, it's not foreigners, it's local tourists. Local people are doing it. He said, in fact, foreigners are very good about not driving their car down the beach. It is the domestic people who are the problem. And this is one of the issues here, is as soon as something happens, who's blamed? Foreigners. Don't bother checking and seeing who was actually involved. Just blame it on us. So that is one of the issues, right? One is, why do people want to drive on the beach? Motorcycles, cars, I don't know. The other thing is, don't jump the gun and blame foreigners for everything that happens here. Okay, that's it for today. I've started writing again. There's a link down below where it says additional things or something. And if you go to the Life in the Tropics blog, <clears throat> I think it's the Life in the Tropics blog. I forget right now. Um, you can see what I've written, the latest thing I've written, which was just kind of in response to people asking me, why are you still in Bali after 34 years? I didn't talk about how I got here. That's a, another article. But this was kind of, I took something I wrote in 2016 and recycled it because most of the things are still the same. And so if you want to see that, you know, you can check that out at the link below. So I hear it is really busy everywhere on the island. How is it where you are? Ubud, Tuban, Changu, Tandidasa, Lovina. Leave a comment. Let us know what it looks like in terms of busyness, busyness. Okay. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe. And I will see you next time.